What's up everyone, it's Andy here and welcome to my Game Week 8 review, a weekly video where I take you through the game week just gone, have a look over my players, the kind of points that I scored, um, my general thoughts on the key points, so for this week we'll be looking at like Man City assets, looking at Harry Kane who's blanked again at home, um, and then to go through kind of what I'm looking at for the week to come. So we're just going to jump straight into it, I will say that I'm recording this on Monday evening straight after the stream I've done, which was straight after the Leicester game, so points haven't updated, I know what I got. Um, but I won't know my final rank, but I'll put in what I was on at this point. It's still got quite a big jump, so it's worth uh, worth discussing. So we'll just jump straight into it, um, and I'll go through my team and what they scored for game week eight. So, nice transition there into my team. As you can see, I scored 72 points this week. Like I say, the game week hasn't quite updated yet, so Davis is still on the pitch, but obviously he didn't play this week. We'll talk about that in a sec. So Sutton will come on for him, get me two points. So 70 on the pitch, Sutton on the bench will bring it up to 72 when he comes on. My rank's 111,000 right now, so I've gone from, I think I was 484,000 before this week, uh, and this week I've got up to 111k now. I've got two points tonight from Vardy, so like I said, I'm recording this on Monday night. So two points for Vardy, two points to come off the bench for Sutton. So once auto subs kick in, I'm not expecting to drop too much further, but I will drop a little bit, I'd say. So about 111k for now, that'll drop a bit. But either way, a big boost from 484k. I'm going to go up at least 300,000 places, probably 350,000 places, which is a huge jump. A lot of people have poor weeks this week. I obviously, basically, if you didn't have Man City players, you probably didn't do quite well this week because... Not many other players scored big. There weren't too many clean sheets. There was a lot of captain fails because Lukaku and Kane didn't do anything. So if you had Man City assets, you were looking good. If you didn't, you weren't. So I'll just go through my team. The two transfers I made in the end were um, Firmino to Vardy and Mkhitaryan to Sterling. Um, I'll talk about why I made those transfers in a minute. But let's just start from the top. So I played Elliot instead of Foster. Turns out Foster's injured. Apparently, um, I think it's his knee that he's done in, uh, and he did that playing with his kid in the back garden, so a bit unlucky for him. It looks like he's going to be out a while, so we'll have to see. I know Myhill played, but it looked like he picked up a bit of a knock, so we'll see who's going to play for them going forward. But it looks like they're going to have a backup keeper option. Now, I wasn't really looking at keeping my West Brom uh, goalkeeper that much longer, especially if I wildcard. I think Elliot's okay for the next three weeks, but then I'll probably just get in someone like Pope or Fabianski to replace him. So... That's the option there, but obviously I didn't play Foster, I played Elliot. They conceded twice to Gabby Adini, of all people, at Southampton. It is what it is, only one point, not great. I'm hoping over the next three weeks where they've got some better fixtures that he'll get me some points. So I'm not too worried about him, he's only my four million defender. But it is worth saying, my goalkeeper rotation, I haven't double-checked it now, but I think before this week it was on something like 22 or 23, so it's probably up to about... 24 25 maximum now that's my goalkeeper rotation for the first eight game weeks that's pretty poor that's about three points per game i suppose for their price it's not too bad it's only cost me 9.5 million for both of them but david de gea who's only would only cost a million more would have done at the start of the season is on 51 points so he's like doubled that score and i now wonder if it would have been well obviously it was worth it but i wonder going forward if it will still be worth it will may not keep up the clean sheets i think they've got something like seven clean sheets in eight games or something ridiculous like that They've got Mourinho, they've got Matic, they've got De Gea, it could happen. But for now, that's not something I'm looking at. But maybe on wildcard, I'll look at maybe bringing in a more expensive keeper who I can just set and play every week. Um, talking about United defence, I played Jones against Liverpool. I had Salah as well. There was always the chance we were going to get a clean sheet. In the end, it did come down to a really good David De Gea save. But again, Jones gets a clean sheet, he gets a bonus point. He's been excellent values. I think he's only 5.2, 5.3 million still. That's still a great price. He looks nailed on as long as he's injury free. Over Christmas, that might change a bit as Mourinho has to rotate because of the amount of games. But right now, I just don't see a reason not to have him in my team. And I think Huddersfield away looks like good for a clean sheet. <clears throat> and then it's Spurs and Chelsea, which might not be the best fixtures. But I can see us getting a clean sheet over one of those. Maybe even both. Um, three clean sheets over the next three games would probably be pushing it. But I think two is not uh, completely out of the world. Out of this world. Um, Davis, no points. Didn't play ill. That's twice now recently, which makes it really annoying. Rose has apparently travelled uh, with the squad to the Champions League as well, which is a bit annoying. If he comes back, then Davis suddenly is not such a great option. I'm not looking at getting rid, even though Spurs' fixtures are about to get a little bit worse. Um, I don't think they're quite that bad just yet. I think he still offers good value for money if he plays. But if Rose starts coming into the equation and starts playing, which he will once he's fit, then it becomes a bit more annoying. I'll have to look at get rid. But right now I'm keeping. Sutton is going to come on for him. Two points. A bit annoyed, not annoyed about that. I don't think you can ever be too annoyed about missing points from the bench. Um, 
but Sutton conceded in the 90th minute. Norton did that again recently as well for me. So it's a bit annoying to lose the clean sheet that late on, but it is what it is. I'm only getting two points for him. And then Norton, another clean sheet for Swansea. Um, I think I've said a few times on various videos and streams, I think Fernandez is the one to have out the cheap defenders at Swansea just because he's better for bonus points. I think he got bonus as well this week. There's only one, but still, it's better than Norton. Um, so I'm happy with Norton. Obviously, I'm not going to sell him. I might do it on wild card. Um, but I think Fernandez is the one to get from Swansea. But they're looking okay for clean sheets at home. And then let's get into midfield. So we'll start off with Salah. He didn't get anything against Man United. He had chances again, didn't really put them away. They weren't clear cut chances, to be fair. I mean, it was a tough fixture. I'm fully expecting him to blank against Spurs away as well. Um, so that will be three blanks in a row. But I'm still not looking to get rid because their fixtures get better. And I still think he's the main man there. Coutinho looks good too. But I'm really happy to own Salah. He's getting the chances. He does need quite a few chances to put them away. But I'm going to hold on to him. I'm going to be patient. There's not really a midfielder that I want to sell him for, which also helps. Um, potentially, I could downgrade into upgrade Vardy, uh, which we'll come on to in a minute. But I think for now, I'm going to keep him. But it will be annoying if he blanks against Spurs, because that will be three in a row. And for that kind of money, you want to be getting more returns for that. But I've been quite patient this year, and it's worked out. So I'm going to keep up that trend. <clears throat> and then I played... Excuse me for the coughing. And then I played Tom Carran. Now, I've got to give a shout-out to anyone that mentioned this over on stream or on Twitter on Saturday morning. I wasn't ever really considering playing him because, as you've seen, I keep calling him Tom Two Points Carroll because that's pretty much all he gets. Maybe the odd three point when they get a clean sheet, but he's never really going to get attacking returns to the point where I even considered starting him on second on my bench every week. But this week, people kind of said, look, if he's not going to get points against Huddersfield, he's never going to. And I kind of like that way of thinking. Atsu had Southampton away, um, and Southampton, I wasn't expecting to concede that many. I wasn't expecting to concede any, to be fair, let alone two goals. Obviously, he got the assist, but Tom Carroll got the assist. As soon as he gets the assist, he gets the bonus points as well. So that was really nice, eight points. Really happy with that. Um, my, I probably won't play him this week, because I think Atsu has the better fixture, but at 4.5 million, I guess he's looking okay on the bench still, and I might even keep him on wildcard now. We'll see. Um, Ericsson, 11 points. That guy, literally, apart from... Maybe the first couple of games, he's he's scoring literally every other week. He's averaging seven points a game uh, at the moment over the course of the season so far. Um, what more do you want, really, for, what is he, like 9.7 million, something like that? Yes, he's on the higher end of midfield prices, and Man City mids look really good right now. But I think for consistency, for starts, for not getting rotated, Ericsson just looks great. And I've, even with the tougher fixtures, I've got no inclination to get rid of him. Now, if you had Ali, that's maybe a different story. I don't think Ali's looked as good. He's not been in the points as much as Ericsson. Um, but yeah, Ericsson's staying for me. I mean, he's been great. Seven points a game. What what more do I really want? Not a lot. Eight points per game, I suppose. But uh, yeah, happy with him. And then Sterling. I took out Mkhitaryan. Now, this was a very last minute uh, transfer on Saturday morning. Basically, I made the transfer to do um, Firmino to Vardy. Uh, on Friday night, and then I realised straight away, what I hadn't realised before I made that transfer was I'd priced myself out of doing Mkhitaryan to Silva. Now, I had the right money to do Mkhitaryan to Sané on Friday night. I knew he was rising, but I didn't want to make that decision because I know Sterling had been doing so well, and he was cheaper, so I let Sané rise. And basically on Saturday morning, I was, it was basically, do I keep Mkhitaryan or do I get Sterling in? And my thought process was, I wasn't um, fully confident that uh, McTarran would do something and while I was a bit worried about Sterling over the next few games I was basically putting all my money into the Stoke game and it worked out really well he got us two assists and a goal um, ended up beating both Sané and Silva so that was a bit lucky for me uh, but yeah got rid of McTarran I think yes the Huddersfield game could be good for him but after that it's tough we don't look as good without Pogba he might be back soon which would be really good but let's see what McTarran does then so I cashed in on him I got Sterling in. He's got me the points. He's now got six goals this season. That's ridiculous. That's the same as Aguero and Jesus, who both have six apiece. Man City are just scoring goals for fun right now. So I think doubling up on the attack is perfectly viable, uh, you know, tactic. Um, and I'm going to keep Sterling. Yes, he might miss the old game, but I think if he's going to keep scoring points like this, then it's worth it. It's six goals already. Um, Pep Guardiola's got him playing so well that... I've got to keep Sterling around. Like, there's no point even talking about it. There's no way I'm transferring out to share. Burnley at home, I don't expect them to get rolled over. Um, but Sterling could be could be on the score sheet again. I might even captain him this week. And then we move up top. I brought Vardy in. I said on a few times, on, again, various streams and videos, I felt like he was a default choice. I think I even titled my video, Is Vardy Too Obvious? It just it just felt like too obvious a move to do for me to Vardy. And sometimes they work out. But he only got two points. Didn't look great against um, against West Brom tonight. Um, that third strike spot basically is really annoying me. I'm, I'm at the point now where I think 
I've got to give Vardy a couple of weeks. I can't need jerk him out. I want to be patient with him. But longer term, I think I'm going to go for three big players at top if I can afford it. I'll have to check funds. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to write him off just yet. But I've never had a goal for Jamie Vardy in FPL. Now, someone said to me earlier, what about when he scored 11 goals in a row? Well, I decided that he couldn't keep that up, so I wouldn't get him in. So it's not just his fault. It's my fault too. I just don't have a good relationship when it comes to Jamie Vardy in FPL. Um, but it is what it is. Two points. Let's hope he does the business over the next two games. Harry Kane, captain... I think you would have seen, um, maybe on the preview actually, I had Jesus captain. Um, if not, I may have switched that just before I recorded the preview. But I did have Jesus captain because I thought it was such a good fixture. Um, and that Harry Kane, he's not been great at home. But because he'd done so well in the previous couple of weeks, I, uh, fair enough that it was away from home. But he scored two braces. I thought, surely the goals at Wembley are coming. And they're just not. And now I'm a bit worried about him, to be honest. And I think there's an argument to get rid of him. I think... The away fixtures coming up aren't great, even though he's been doing better away. I think it's Arsenal away and Man United away in the next four. And then the home fixtures look good. He's got some really nice, favourable fixtures on paper, but he's just not performing at Wembley. And he has scored at Wembley, so let's let's not pretend that he can't do it. But in the Premier League, when teams are sitting back, is that a struggle? I don't know. Is it just a coincidence that he's moved to Wembley and he's just not scoring? I, I don't know. It's, I still feel that he's too good of a player to stop scoring. Will I really take him out? I don't know. But I can see an argument for uh, getting a fit Morata or maybe even Aguero, who are better value. And in a few weeks, Lukaku's fixtures turn again, and I might be looking to get him, uh, get him back. So... Kane will probably stay for me this week. I think the good thing about playing home uh, at Wembley against Liverpool is Liverpool will want to attack. They're not going to sit back, I don't think. So that might open up some space for Kane to get in, score some goals. Maybe they'll penalty here or there would be nice. So I'm going to keep him, but I can definitely see a reason to get rid, especially for someone like Morata. That frees up like two and a half million, which could be which could be huge elsewhere. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at maybe getting rid, but not right now. And then Jesus, he's finally repaying the faith I've had in him. To be fair to the guy, every game he's played apart from the first two games, so for the last six game weeks, he scored in every one he started. Now, he did miss one, so, so fair enough, that's actually only five games where he scored. But he's got an attack in return over an assist or goal in each one. Uh, and obviously got a brace on all three bonus points, so really happy with that. Do I think he can do that again next week with Aguero back? We'll see. I mean, I was hoping that... Um, or at least the, the original news was that Aguero was going to be out a bit longer. So Jesus looked like a really good pick. Now he just looks like an okay pick. But I'm going to keep him. He's cheaper than Aguero. Let's see how he does over the next few weeks. We'll see how Aguero gets on in the Champions League first. And just go from there. So yeah, I've got 72 points. I think the main talking points really, we've covered a Man City. You've got to have some of their attackers. Um, you'd almost go as far as saying you can cover City attack because you just get any of them they'll do well even Fernandinho was on the score sheet um, and then Kane yes I can see why you might want to get rid I don't necessarily have the cojones uh, as a way of putting it to do that move um, but we'll see I'm definitely going to consider it and I've already shown this year that I did Lukaku out because I thought I could spread that money better it didn't work out I'm now thinking along the same signs as Kane the Lukaku situation won't put me off doing that it's just whether I think Kane can score at Wembley again, and surely he can. He's too good, and Spurs are too good not to not to do well there. But we'll see how long it pans out for. This this Wembley theory could last half the season, and I could lose out on a lot of points by not moving them on. So let me know, actually, in the comments below what you think about Kane. Are you tripling up on City attack? Are you getting rid of Harry Kane if you haven't got him? Um, and if so, who are you bringing in? I suppose with Aguero coming back from injury, Morata currently out. We don't know en enough about him right now. Should be back for Champions League. We'll have to see on that. Lukaku's fixture is about to turn. Is it, just, is it just wise to keep Kane now? Let me know in the comments below. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what your score was this week. Um, I did pretty well. Got a high uh, jumping rank. Let me know what points you got, what rank you're at now. I'd really like to know that. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you're new around here, subscribe. That'll let you know when the next video is going out. Um, and also when I'm streaming. So I've just streamed on Monday night after Game Week 8 finishing. I'm going to stream on Thursday night just before Game Week 9 starts. And then we'll try and carry that on uh, as the season goes on. And doing, so, well, doing well so far. So yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe. All that good stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for watching all.